Yes, it is the second to last episode of our Dubstep from Scratch series here on Ableton. Today, as you can obviously tell from the title, is the mastering episode and I thought, you know what, we'll do it with stock Ableton plugins. Ableton 12.1 introduced a new limiter and a new saturator, perfect excuse to use them with mastering and see how they sound in a mastering chain. Into the Ableton session, we have our final mastered track, plenty of headroom, and we also have a reference track, of course, so we can compare our master to another master track. In this case, it is the showcase track for one of my uh, drum packs. I really like the kind of aesthetic and sound of it was kind of like crispy but like smooth around the edges in a weird way all right let's crack on I did quite a few tweaks after the last episode of the series and uh, it's sounding a lot cleaner overall which I'm happy with <laughs> The bass is at a more consistent level, more effects, more flow, more. First off, how do I want to start off my chain? A bit of EQ8 would never hurt. Do we have some random bullshit frequencies down here? Yes, we do. If that's 30 hertz. Maybe not a super steep curve. I'm purely looking at the visual kind of representation here. See, well, I don't need sub bass down there, but um, and I'm also listening to if the sub bass is getting ruined, which it's not, so that is not too bad. First EQ of the mastering chain, typically cutting instead of boosting. I wouldn't really boost too much on a mastering chain unless it was like multi-band or it needed a little bit of character at some part of the frequency spectrum. So I like to find notches of the track um, with a very steep Q for an EQ filter. And once I find one, just bump it down and then do that as many times as I can kind of not butcher the sound, but like not completely strip away the character of the sound, but if there's any nasties in there. They may be resonanty because it's like the main kind of root note or frequency of the uh, scale. So we will test that one out anyway. All right, after a few notches, doing some A-B testing. That one definitely tightens up the kick. I'm really happy with that. A little bit of character has been stripped on the high end, so um, I'm gonna ease up on these notches and see which one is the culprit. Definitely 9 dB, oh my God, what am I doing? Yeah, maybe we don't need 10 dB of that. This is definitely where practice makes perfect comes into play and relying on your ear a lot uh, to see whether you're making it worse or better. Still not quite right. Maybe these cuts are way too dramatic. Maybe there? There we go, that sounds way cleaner. A couple of little uh, disturbances around the low mid. So let's hear the second drop. This high pass is definitely interfering with some of the really low bass notes we've got. Really? Yeah, that sub's not even coming through. Maybe 18 hertz, kind of, oh my god. Is it even doing anything at that point? Okay, you know what, I'm, I'm keeping that off. It completely butchers that low end bass. Maybe Ableton is like 18 hertz. This is really like 40, 50 hertz. Don't boost the shit out of the sub bass yet with an EQ. All right, maybe a hint of saturation before multiband, touch of OTT, saturator limiter. New saturator looks a bit funny. No clip, we don't want, it shouldn't be nearing the clipping stage yet. Color, maybe? We'll see how, we'll see how we go. Amount to low. Oh God, why do I weirdly like that? Can we just add the littlest bit of Nokia brick phone recording? 2%, no, why don't I put negative 2%? 40%.
So just we'll come back to that. I'm not I'm not sold on that yet. Maybe that can be our subtle saturation. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll we'll definitely come back to that. Multi band dynamic, multi band dynamics definitely a key part. I'm gonna chuck in the slightest slightest bit of OTT uh, just on this mastering chain. So three percent. We're gonna be A Bing all these uh, effects that we're adding later on, just so I don't make it worse. Um, actually, multi band. Here we go. What do we want? We want a tight sub bass. We want crispy highs and a contained mid range. That's exactly what we want. It sounds boxy already, just having it switched on. I was gonna adjust our cutoff. Cool, the snare's not coming through. Actually, that sounds way better. Uh, what do we want? Threshold. It's basically three mini compressors right here, but for a, a specific frequency band. Tiny bit of compression. What do we say? What did I say before? Contained sub bass. No, tight sub bass. Let's uh, really crank this. I really want the kick to just bypass and then the compressor latch onto the sub. So we'll have like a really slow attack. So we give the kick a chance to just sneak through that uh, compression, but then latch onto the sub. All right, now let's swag. Okay, mid range, same thing. Snare just needs to slip through the compression and then the compression latches onto our mid range. <laughs> mid range, mid range. Oh, now we can really hear it. Kick makes up a lot of this range as well. Contain low end, okay. That sounds great. Oh, crispy contained highs. For attack and release, I typically like slow-ish attack times, fast release, get the transients coming through and then the compression latches onto the rest. So it's still like a punchy crisp mix instead of just like everything's contained because the attack's too high. But we draw for that back. We don't want 11 dBs of uh, compression. See, way too contained. And we want to bring back the high end that we just cut off. Before and after. Still not punchy. You can really hear it with the like the high end of like the snare. We're losing it. Too much compression. Just a little bit of gain reduction on everything. It kind of just brings everything up to like a consistent-ish level, but uh. Oh my god, I just thought something we didn't do early on. So we'll adjust that later as well. We've got a lot of things to adjust later. Need to go back and introduce mid side. So you can change your EQ from stereo, how it normally is. Affect everything. Or you could change it to mid slash side. So this will control the middle of your stereo width and the sides of your stereo width. So, so have a listen. Why am I doing that? I don't know. We want to typically uh, spread the high end frequencies on the stereo kind of sound and then kind of keep the basses mono. Very mono. Actually, we need second drop for this.
a little bit more contained. I think I had the stereo image pretty well worked in uh, the mix down, so I don't need to really tweak it for the uh, master. Multiband, we're going to come back to that. We need some saturation. Analog clip, soft sign, digital wave shaper. A little bit of soft sign could be nice. Why is it loud already? I haven't even dialed in the drive. Actually, let's keep the drive normal. Output. I'm gonna add some color. I feel like it's just... The saturation that it's doing to the bass, ain't it? What's the width of the Q? See if this does anything. No, it's too loud. It's not a good AB if the volumes are too different. Bring it up a tiny bit. No, not you. Little bit of saturation. I like what it's doing the high end. It's kind of making it a bit more crisp and a bit more glue together. But the low end is just killing it, so that ain't it. Anyway, lastly, limiter. This looks fancy, Ableton. It does look fancy. We want to maximize the crap out of this. Yes, we want a zero dB ceiling. We want true peak. Do we want to clip it? Interesting. Release all the way to zero. We want just the fastest release possible. We've got a few new features to play with. Soft clip just sounds. Mm. I think True Peak sounds gangster. Anyway, let's see how loud we are making this. <laughs> True Peak sounds gangster. Oh shit. Here we go again. I was gonna say negative six. I always do that with our mastering. I try to aim for the RMS, which is like the average volume uh, of the master for negative six. Oh, but we have so many other effects to revisit. Why did I OT? Oh no. Let's see if this sounds good. You know, OTT, you're going. You're gone. I don't know, the bass wasn't just pulsating right with that wub. You know what, it's meant to be the old school sound. I'm rating that highly. Okay, I like a midway point between on and off, so I'm just gonna ease up on these values. That's just a little bit too much. Maybe nine dB, ain't it? Oh, what? We can just actually do this. Scale. Accentuate or unaccentuate. Mean? Okay, okay. What else do we have? Is this our multiband? Now it's sounding good. I feel like with this multiband turned down, all the frequencies were kind of just roughly hitting the limiter, but with the multiband introduced, everything's a bit more cohesive, more glued together, because it's compressing all the individual bands, and it's just turned into an overall smoother sound before it hits that limiter. We actually need to reference this to our reference song, instead of just listening to the track with effects and having nothing to compare it to.
would be cool if it had like a a dry wet amount for each band like ozone does ableton can you add that instead of just overall kind of <laughs> This bit's new as well. I worked on this since uh, the last episode. It's sounding way cleaner. Anyway, reference. <laughs> oh my god, I can tell that's already so much more wider. That's what the reference is for. Okay, we've got way too much high end apparently. More mids. No, actually. Maybe a bump there. And it feels. That is a loud boy. Okay. Do we push the limiter? See what our waveform's looking like. If it's a sausage, then it's gonna look like a sausage anyway. What am I on about? That's not too bad. We could we could full sausage this. Like how it was before. Anyway. We can actually compare what these kind of modes are doing as well. So that's true peak, soft clip. Bit more beefed up and louder. Is it actually... Yeah, bit more beefed up for sure. Okay, and true peak. Well, we had true peak before. Fucking identical. True peak's loud. True peak is definitely louder. Comparing the mastering of Ozone versus uh, stock standard plugins. Ableton's doing a good job, but Ozone's just like <laughs> on another. Ozone's built for mastering. Ableton's built for everything. I reckon that's a good starting point. I'm happy with that. And obviously, like I said, at the end of all mastering videos, go give your ears a break, then come back to it. See what needs to be tweaked. Rinse and repeat that cycle on and on and on until it is done. And that is that. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. That was a lot of fun. Ableton's new limiter is gangster. Saturator, I'm digging it. It's gonna take me a bit to get used to it. I absolutely love the original saturator. What if this is just like a revamped version, not just like a new saturator? I'm just absolutely chatting out of my ass like, it sounds different. Next episode is gonna be the project file download. You don't wanna miss that. Not this project file, but the actual track. <laughs> I could chuck this project file in as well. Maybe, fuck it, both project files. All right, see you guys then, peace. <laughs>